Okay, we're going to find out how to solve for complex roots. So example one says f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 6. Now if you were to graph this, it would look something like this. And you'll notice that this quadratic never crosses the x-axis. So something like this, we would say, you know what, hey, this thing has no real solutions. But once again, that's not good enough. We need to find its actual solutions because whenever you have an x squared as your highest degree, there are always at least two solutions. So in order to tackle this, we have to use our quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now with the complex roots, this is actually kind of nice. These typically wind up being some of the easiest problems to solve. And I'll show you why kind of more towards the end. So what's our trick? We start by replacing every letter with a set of parentheses. So I write negative parentheses plus or minus the square root of parentheses squared minus four parentheses parentheses all over two parentheses. Okay, let's go ahead and plug these in. Now I know my a term here is one so everywhere we see an A, everywhere we see an A, we're going to plug in the number 1. Let's go ahead and use this nice purple for my B term. It's a positive 2. So everywhere we see a B, we're going to have to plug in positive 2. And of course, for this nice C term, positive 6, let's use green. Okay. Now, if you will remember from our previous videos, we simplified the outside. A negative times a positive is negative 2 plus or minus the square root. Now we're going to simplify the inside, starting with 2 squared, which is 4. And here we count our negatives. There's only one negative. Remember, this guy was in trouble last time. And 4 times 1 is 4 times 6 is 24. All over, and 2 times 1 is, of course, 2. Now, you're going to remember that we always simplify the outside, inside, bottom, but sometimes, whenever our inside of the square root doesn't fully simplify, we're going to have to simplify it again. So x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of, and 4 minus 24 is negative 20, all over 2. Now you'll notice something here. Here we have the square root of a negative number. And this is math that we always have to do off to the side. The square root of negative 20. Well, that breaks down into the square root of negative 1, like in our previous video, and the square root of positive 20. Now, you should know that 20 breaks down into 4 and 5, and 4 breaks down into 2 and 2. And this is actually really nice. Why is it so nice? Because I'm now going to take this formula that I have so far, or this equation, technically, and we'll write this. x equals negative 2 plus or minus, and notice I have a pair of twos, plus or minus two, I have the square root of negative one, which gives me the i, square roots of, and my leftover five, all over that two on the bottom. Now this is not the final answer. This is not the final answer, but I do need to clean this up just a little bit. So please pause the video, finish taking any notes that you need. Okay, so here, Remember, we had this, we have x equals negative 2 plus or minus 2i square roots of 5 all over 2. And here's the very last thing. Whenever your number in the bottom can reduce both of these coefficients, you can actually do that. So for instance, here we have negative 2 divided by 2 is 1 plus or minus 2 divided by 2 is 1i square root of 5. And this is as simplified as we can really get our answer. If you wanted to write it out as x equals negative 1 plus i square root of 5 and x equals negative 1 minus i square root of 5, I suppose you could, but this is what I would prefer to accept. Okay, let's move on to our final example. Okay, here we have example two. G of x equals 4x squared plus 5x plus 8. 
Now let's go ahead and do some labeling. Here we have our A term, our B term, and our C term. Now if you will recall, we always write out our quadratic formula first, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And what does that look like once I plug in all my values? Well, we'll write firstly negative parentheses plus or minus, I think my laptop's down, let me plug it in here real quick, plus or minus the square root of parentheses squared minus 4 parentheses parentheses all over 2 parentheses. Now let's go ahead and plug in everything that we see. We see that our a term is 4, so everywhere where I see an a, I'm going to have, go ahead and plug in a positive 4. Okay? I see here in this nice orange color that my b term is 5. Oh man, I should have used, I should have used different <laughs> b terms other than 5. I think this is my third time so far. For that, I apologize. <clears throat> and lastly, our c term is positive 8. Now, let's start working through this. We know that we will start by simplifying the outside. A negative times a positive is a negative, plus or minus, the square root of. We know that 5 squared is 25, as we've seen three times now. And here, remember, I want you to count the negatives. Of these three numbers, there's only one negative, and so we're going to put minus, and then we have 4 times 4, which is 16, and then we have 16 times 8. Now remember, for these bigger numbers, I would just grab a calculator. You could even multiply all these together. Um, 4 times 4 times 8, which is 128, all over n2 times 4, which is 8. Now from here, remember, we have to simplify the inside again, and we'll get this. x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 103. When you do 25 minus 128, it'll be negative 103 all over 8. Now I told y'all, these complex roots were sometimes often easier than finding real numbers, and here's the best example why. Because our final answer will simply be x equals negative 5 plus or minus, and notice 123 is a prime number. It can't be broken down. So we just pull the negative square or the square root of negative 1 to the outside or that i term and we leave it as the square root of 103 all over 8 because this couldn't simplify you just pull out the i the imaginary term and you're done well guys 5 can't be divided by 8 so we can't simplify and this is straight up the answer now remember if you wanted to write it out only if you wanted to as negative 5 plus I square roots of 103 over 8 and negative 5 minus I square roots of 103 over 8 you surely could but remember this is the preferred way of writing it all right good luck guys and I hope you do well in this lesson